Hi, I'm Garth Coleman. I'm the VP of Products and Strategy at 3D Via here at Dassel Systems. And we are here in the lives where we are actually exploring an oil platform and understanding what are the jobs and functions we need to do to be successful in our operation of this, uh, this platform. So can you talk about this virtual reality experience that we're seeing here? Sure. So what we have, is it's a, it's a gaming technology, gaming engine. But we're putting in that gaming engine some real assets in there to represent the real facility. So we're bringing the real world into the virtual environment for the sake of providing real types of training. So unlike a game where I can kind of do whatever I want or I got to go shoot somebody or something like that, this is a realistic scenario for a business application to train people on an asset they otherwise can't get to because this thing is, is normally deployed, it's out at sea or it's in a remote location and if this guy here needs to deploy, he can get trained properly here first before he actually goes into the real world. Talk a little about the controller and some of the other technology like the head tracking glasses. Sure, so the idea here is to fully immerse the user into the environment. So in order to do that, you need the multiple walls to give the sense of surrounding. You need all, um, the, the remote, which actually allows you to walk and explore the environment, to point and select on things. And you need the glasses there to give you the 3D. But, and the head tracking, the little things on the, uh, on the glasses allow for the head tracking. So as you look around, the system can adjust the perspective for you to give you that additional sense of immersion. Now you also even have a floor, which allows you to look down and see that you're way up high on this rig. You actually can look down. And what's really cool is when you get into the corners and you have objects that are kind of going between screens, you actually get a holographic effect. So it looks like there's 3D that you're actually looking at and walking around. It's really cool. Where did the idea of this come from? I've heard people call it a holodeck from Star Trek, but, but talk about how, I mean, it also has the feel of a first-person shooter type video game. Sure, I mean, it would be a really expensive first-person shooter <laughs> game. Uh, but the idea here is, you know, this technology has been around for a long time. Uh, and at Dassault Systems, you know, we prim primarily are working with large enterprise businesses and small companies that are trying to make new designs and bring those designs into the real world. So we said, you know, this gaming technology is really cool. This 3D immersive technology is really cool. How can we bring all of these things together so that businesses can take advantage of it? So a natural fit was the exploration or familiarization with some, some area or some platform or like a mine or something like that. Or I have a design that's never been made before. I don't want to make a physical prototype. Let me actually go in here and, and experience it almost as real as possible before I actually make anything real. So I can do that very quickly. I can adjust those designs very quickly because these things are able to, you know, it's, it's a virtual world. I can change things on the computer and have it rendered here very quickly so I don't have to do the normal slow experience of a real physical object. And then you can also start to put the additional scenarios in here. So if I wanted to, I could start a fire over here and see how he responds to the fire. And is he doing his proper procedure? Or is he going to the right evacuation point if the wind is coming from the north, for example? So you can build all these scenarios in here, and it becomes like a training simulator in that sense. Is this something that like a oil rig uh, company would actually have in their studio at some place that people can go through and train? So the idea here is... Uh, I think it, it depends, obviously, on the, the company and their, where they're at and their technology innovation, what they want to do. Certainly they have simulators that, that can, you know, a control room operator would be saying, uh, I'm going to turn this on, turn this off in, a, in a, like a computer room and see some displays, but they're not actually in the environment. So we bring this ability to be immersed in the environment, and as I'm touching and interacting, you can still connect to those simulation systems, but then see the impact and have a real 3D experience of what I'm doing. So the idea here is that you know, some of this technology in this type of application is still kind of early, um, but there's a lot of validation. And the more remote or dangerous the facility, the more impact this has. So for example, if I'm in a mine, and before I go into a mine, you know, the thing is dark, it's explosive. How do I train that I know where to go, what to do, and everything else? And if I can actually have a simulation like this, I'm gonna be much better prepared. So when I go into that mine, it's like I've been there before. Like I'm, I'm practicing in a safe environment that allows me to get my job done. So when I go there for the first time for real, it's not like I'm learning on the fly. I've already learned, and now I know what to do. So, so talk about iStream and how that uh, utilizes this technology. Sure. So iStream actually involved quite a bit of uh, technology from, from our company in order to make that kind of uh, understood, which is the dream was can we take an iceberg and tow it to a place that needs the water? And what are all the elements involved with that from from figuring out how to make sure this thing doesn't have all the heat loss so it melts away, to, to making sure I can actually tug this thing with, with a boat and manage currents and all that sort of stuff. 
So there's a lot of kind of investigation and analysis that, that is, is done in our whole, all of all the software that we have. What this brings us is now the ability to actually go on the tugboat and actually experience and be on the boat, kind of be in the waves, see how the thing is working, and, and visit and learn what's going on in there and, and why do we have this big curtain here and, and why are we going this way instead of that way. So by being inside of there you have a very high educational value. So in this case the ice dream is more about the possibilities of what's there versus a realistic scenario of how do I actually take a, a, a gauge or measurement reading here. But the technology still has educational value. Whether it's educational value in the case of what could we possibly do uh, if we dream these types of things uh, or educational value from a historical perspective, like in the Giza project, where what did this look like back then? What are some things I need to know? What does this architectural dig mean to the relevance of this, that, and the other thing? So you have this mix here of bringing in real scenarios with educational value, whether they're for business usage, historical purposes, or even instructional purpose, like in Staying Alive, where somebody has a heart attack, do you know how to help that person? And what better than a game to help people learn? Because sitting down and taking a, a typical instructor-led class, let's face it, it's boring, you know. But actually getting immersed in the game, and being scored, engaged on what I do, and bringing that feedback and assessment, that's what we can really improve things. So here, he's wandering around, but I can actually track everything he does. Did he go the right way? Did he push the right buttons? Did he actually hurt himself or somebody else? And that educational value then can be returned back to the user so they can truly learn.